It's ready? Yeah. Here's a BB1. Here's a BB1. Here's a three in mine. Okay. Here's a BB1. You get it? Uh, Just get the one. Oh, good job. That's a nice one. First of the strawberries are coming in. This one too. Hey friend, welcome back to Seeding Sparrow Homestead. My name is Kelsey, if this is your first time hanging out, today we're gonna be in the kitchen. We have lots of fun recipes to make. I'm gonna get my oven here preheating. We have our first small harvest of the 2024 season. I'm really excited about it because the first harvest, the smaller ones, are my most favorite because I'm not feeling that pressure and overwhelm to just get everything preserved before it spoils. So I can have a bit more fun and be creative with the recipe. So we have some rhubarb we're going to be working with today. The first of the strawberries are coming in. I went out this morning and there's already a ton more starting to turn. So soon it's gonna be morning, afternoon, evening going out to secure the strawberry harvest before the critters do. We have the last, most of the last um, asparagus harvest this year. I went out this morning, there were only two from my nearly 30 like asparagus crowns coming up two spheres so this is the last bulk of it so we're gonna do a few fun things with that today and I also have some fruit and veggies from last year's garden in the freezer that I want to bring out and use in some of today's recipes so we're getting everything washed up and we're gonna get started
gonna get started on our first recipe. We're gonna make a frittata with asparagus, parmesan, chives, and leeks. I just ran outside to grab some chives from the garden. So I'm gonna cut these guys up, start prepping all of my ingredients. Really simple to put together. Um, it's gonna be yummy breakfast for us all week. And right now is the time of year for us where eggs are just overflowing. We've been giving so many away and we still have so many left over. So we're gonna make use of a dozen eggs today in this recipe. Leeks from last year's garden. I had freeze dried. I'm gonna use a handful of these. I'm gonna get some good butter melting in a pan here. We're gonna start taste some things. I'm gonna add our leeks in here as well as our asparagus and allow that to get a little tender. If you don't have leeks or don't like them, you could use shallots or you could just use onions. Asparagus is done sauteing over there. We're gonna get our egg mixture together. So I have one dozen eggs. We're gonna crack here. To the eggs, we're gonna add about a quarter cup of heavy cream, about a teaspoon of salt, and a dash of black pepper, and I have to open this one. Oh. A little bit of pepper. We're gonna do about a half cup of freshly grated parm. It's very fluffy, so it looks like more, but it's about a half cup. I'm also gonna do a half cup of feta. I really like those two together. I think it's a good combo, but you could omit the feta if you don't like that tang. Perfectly yummy with just the Parmesan too. Two tablespoons of our chives from the garden. And we're gonna get this mixed up. I have a greased nine by 13 here, which might be a little bit overkill, but that's okay. We're going to add our sauteed asparagus and leeks in here. The leeks got nice and golden brown and smells so good. I'm gonna spread that in here evenly. I'm gonna pour our egg mixture over the top. I don't know, I don't think I mentioned. I used about the equivalent of like a bunch of asparagus that you would get from the store, and maybe a half cup of sliced leeks. You could add more or less, honestly. I'm gonna pour this over the top. I love making either a frittata or a quiche for the mornings. It's just a really well-rounded breakfast and super easy to make ahead of time. So for those busy mornings, we just have a good breakfast, just ready to heat up and go into a 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes. We'll give it a check in a little bit. Just a couple minutes left on the frittata. I got everything cleaned up, some stuff ready for our next dish. We're gonna do something with asparagus again. We're gonna make some cream of asparagus soup 
super delicious. I completely forgot about this dish until one of you suggested I make some cream of asparagus with this harvest. I don't love frozen asparagus because it just ends up really mushy and then I have to end up using it in a way to like hide that texture. So usually like in a soup pureed up in some way. So we're just gonna do that now. I'm gonna throw this into the freezer for like a cooler rainy day this summer because it is stinking hot here right now. It is 92 degrees today. And in the 10 day forecast, I don't think it's supposed to go below 85. So it's not exactly soup season, but I'm sure a day or two will come up in the next three months, which is about how long I keep things in the freezer for these types of things. Um, so we're gonna make that stay and we're going to roast the asparagus. I wanted the extra depth of flavor. You can probably hear a T-Rex in the background. <laughs> Normal life here. Um, so I'm gonna just chop off the ends of these, drizzle them with some olive oil, a little bit of salt, and we're gonna get them roasting. There's the frittata all done. It smells heavenly. So we're gonna let this cool and I will slice it up for the week into portions and I'll probably make some like bacon or sausage to serve alongside it. For this cream of asparagus soup, I'm gonna use about two pounds of asparagus spears. I'm gonna chop off the ends that were in the water, just a couple of them. Felt like they're getting a little bit slimy. Chop those guys off, grab some olive oil. Drizzle them up. A little bit of salt. And these will just go in the oven, like 400 degrees for 15, 20 minutes until they are tender. I'm gonna chop up some celery. I'm gonna use some of those leeks again in this recipe. I use leeks, shallots, and onions interchangeably. They all have just a little bit different of a flavor profile. I much prefer either shallots or leeks to onions. They're just not quite as pungent. If you are an onion lover, you go for it. We just aren't, but we do really like the flavors that shallots and leeks give the dishes. So we're going to saute up some celery, three stalks, and probably a, a half cup of the leeks in some butter. I'm just gonna do the rest right in the stock pot. It's not, I guess I could have roasted those things with the asparagus, but they don't really need it. I like the flavor the asparagus gets in the oven. Celery going in. Two handfuls of leeks. I'm just gonna let these soften up. of minced garlic, about a teaspoon. And we're gonna add chicken broth in now, about four cups. Now dicing one large potato, we're gonna throw in to the soup pot, bring it to a boil, cover, allow this and the other ingredients in there, the celery and the leeks to cook all the way through. By that time, the asparagus should be done roasting. We'll chop that up, add it in there along with a few other ingredients and we're going to immersion blend the whole thing. Potatoes have boiled till tender, so now we'll add in the roasted asparagus. I just roughly chopped up just to help the immersion blender a bit. Take it 
taking it off the stove now. A little bit of Italian seasoning, salt, pepper, about a half cup of heavy cream. Pop an immersion blender in here. If you don't have one of these, you could just throw this all into a stamp blender. I love this stuff. If you like, like, a uh, cheesy broccoli soup. This is very similar to that. I think it's a bit more elevated. Um, you could totally throw in some sort of cheese in here if you want. And if you have a husband like mine or whoever you're making this for, if they prefer meat with their meal, like Matt requests meat at every meal. He's just one of those guys. So I could very easily serve meat alongside this or I could just fry up some bacon and throw that on top of this as well. Maybe a little dollop of sour cream, some chives on top. Good stuff. Asparagus has been used up. So we're gonna move on and work with some rhubarb now. I'm dropping my paper towel. I have three recipes for us to work on. One is probably not unheard of. I'm sure you've all heard of strawberry rhubarb jam, but I'm gonna do a recipe from my Pomona's Pectin book here. And it doesn't use any refined sugar. It's just honey. Um, and I just thought it sounded lovely. I love the taste of honey and things. So strawberry rhubarb jam made with honey sounded lovely. So we're going to do that. We're also going to make a straw, not, not strawberry. We're doing raspberries. I have so many raspberries still from last year. Um, I think I had about 15 pounds in the freezer. I'm down to like eight or nine, but soon we'll be harvesting again. So I need to start working through these a bit faster. Today we're going to do a raspberry rhubarb galette. Love those. Um, it's kind of like a rustic pie. And we're also going to make some rhubarb scones that we can have our honeyed strawberry rhubarb jam on them. So I need to get my rhubarb all chopped up and separated, divided in between the recipes. One pound of diced rhubarb here. We're gonna get into this pot. Add a half cup of water to said pot. We're gonna get this on the stove and we're gonna bring it to a boil. Get some strawberries out here, take off the stems. We're gonna throw these into a bowl and we're gonna mash them up. We need about a pound. to let this come to a boil then down to a simmer for about five minutes until it got nice and soft mashed it down measured out two cups two cups of the mashed strawberries going in here we're gonna add some lemon juice we need two tablespoons two tablespoons bottled lemon juice whoops 
Okay, that was a little bit more than a tablespoon. I'll go a little under for this one. Then we need two teaspoons of the calcium water that you make from the Pomona's pectin packets. I want this fill up all the way. One, two, they weren't filling up all the way. We're gonna mix this thoroughly, bring it up to a boil, and then in another bowl, we'll mix together some Pomona's pectin powder and some honey. We're gonna mix one and one quarter cup honey with two and a half teaspoons of Pomona's pectin powder. Mix this up well. This is at a full boil now, so we're gonna slowly add in the honey pectin mixture, stirring constantly. We're gonna stir this all together well for about a minute or two until the entire mixture comes back up to a full boil. And then we will remove it from the heat and get it into some jars. A full boil is when, even while stirring, it doesn't stop the bubbles. So we're gonna remove this from the heat and grab some jars. Got my jelly jars all ready to go, filling these to a quarter inch head space, we will debubble if needed, wipe the rims, place new lids, tighten rings to fingertip tight, and these process at a full rolling boil for 10 minutes. We're gonna move on and start making the filling for our galette. So I have four cups of sliced rhubarb in here, about eight ounces of raspberries from last year's garden. Come on, last piece. I'm gonna add a quarter cup orange juice. We'll add some sugar because I know the rhubarb itself is always tart and the raspberries were tart too from last year. So I'm gonna do a half cup of, this is maple sugar, but you could use any kind of sweetener. We're gonna allow this to cook over medium heat for about five minutes. Some of the juices here have released after five minutes. So now we're gonna turn the heat up, bring it to a boil, and we're gonna add in a thickener. This is arrowroot powder and some water, quarter cup. You can use arrowroot powder or cornstarch, quarter cup of that to three tablespoons of water. I'm gonna mix that in and allow this to boil. Bring it to a boil and then allow it to boil for about two minutes. Remove it from the heat and we're gonna allow it to cool completely before we assemble our galette. 
we're gonna start on the dough for the galette. This one needs to chill for at least an hour in the fridge in order for it to roll out really nice for you. It's a lot of butter in the dough. So we are just making a single dough today. Sometimes I will double it and keep one in the freezer, but I'm really running low on freezer space. And we are actually butchering our chickens, our meat birds this weekend. And I need all the space I can get. So only one today for one pastry dough. It is just one cup of all purpose flour, an eighth cup of granulated sugar of choice, a quarter teaspoon of salt, one stick, very cold butter cubed up. We are going to mix these things together, crumbling all of that butter in there with our fingers until we have a very coarse, rough dough. And we're gonna add in just a few tablespoons of ice cold water, a little bit at a time, just until the dough starts to come together. You don't want too much water and you don't want to over mix this dough. We'll shape it into a flat, small disc, cover it up, and set it in the fridge for about an hour. While we wait on that, we'll get to work on some rhubarb scones. Can you tell that we love scones here? This is the reason why I go through so much butter. I make scones sometimes a few times a month and I'll make a double batch, which I'm making here today. We just love them. They're not overly sweet, they're a nice little snack or something to have alongside breakfast. Really delightful. So I make them all the time with a ton of different variations. So we have rhubarb scones today. The base for this is two and a quarter cup of all-purpose flour, a half cup of sugar. I used maple sugar this time. One tablespoon of baking powder and a half teaspoon salt. Mix that all well together. And then again, we are going to add in some butter. Eight tablespoons of cold butter cubed. Mixing together, tearing up that butter until it's nice and crumbly. For the liquid, we're gonna use some buttermilk. And where are my PA people at using the gears? Now we don't use gears very much anymore because we've switched over to raw milk, just a local farm, but I used to use gears for everything. I have not found any sort of raw buttermilk or raw cream around here, so I'll still use gears for things like that. We're gonna mix in a half cup, maybe a little bit more of some buttermilk. Before you do that though, I like to add in my vanilla so it kind of mixes with the buttermilk. I did a lot more than the recipe calls for. <laughs> I usually just dump it into my heart's desire. We love vanilla. I don't know that I've ever added too much vanilla to something for our taste, but the recipe is one teaspoon. We're just gonna mix that all together until almost combined. Again, we don't wanna overwork these heavy butter doughs. I'm gonna add in the rhubarb now. I diced up, it'd be one cup per recipe. I doubled, so I've got quite a bit in here. I'm just gonna work at folding this into the dough. The last time we made scones together, I had mentioned that I, instead of the traditional 
shape them into a disc, cut them into little pie slices. I have been rolling out the dough and cutting them into little biscuits or cookies. I've said my children, anytime they see a circle, something in their brain says, oh, a cookie, and they're more likely to eat it. So I've just been doing that and we actually like it. It actually ends up getting more out of the dough because the servings aren't quite as large. So it kind of stretches it a little bit too. We're gonna brush the tops with some buttermilk. You could use heavy cream or even an egg wash. And these will go into a 375 degree oven for about 15 to 20 minutes. back to our rustic glut. I'm getting the dough out and we're going to roll it into about 12 to 14 inch circle. transferred the dough to a lined sheet pan and we are going to spoon on the filling which has cooled completely it's thickened a lot as it bakes though it will thicken even more we're going to spread this on here leaving about an inch and a half of space along the outer edge of the crust begin folding in the edges carefully gently I probably should have left my dough in the fridge a bit longer but I was in haste so this is like I said a very rustic dessert so it does not have to look perfect I promise it'll still taste so good Gonna brush the crust with an egg wash, just an egg yolk and a little bit of water. And I sprinkled on some coconut sugar, but if you have like turbinado sugar or some sort of coarser sugar that does not melt so easily, you can just sprinkle that all along the crust. This baked at 425 degrees for about 25 to 30 minutes. All of these recipes turned out so good. I don't think I could pick a favorite. I will make them all again. Let me know which one you'd be most interested in trying. I hope this gave you some inspiration and you enjoyed coming along for these garden to table recipes using up the first harvest of the season. There will be many more where this came from. We are just getting started. Thank you so much, friend for hanging out with me. Please don't forget to like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and go ahead and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. I appreciate those things so much. It helps this channel grow and in turn blesses our family. I am so grateful for you. You have a blessed week and I'll see you next time.
Take care.